Hey guys, it's Agnes Dilma again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you if you could subscribe to the channel by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because that's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more content. Today I'm going to continue the augmented reality videos. We're going to be focusing on image tracking. And the reason why I want to do a part two of image tracking is because some of you asked me for to show you actually how it runs on the iPhone device. So that's what I'm going to do first, and then I'm going to give you an overview of what we did previously. So let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. All right, guys, so it looks like the application is now running, and we should see the Unity logo at some point now. There we go. See the Unity logo, and the camera should start in just a few more seconds. All right, guys, so it looks like this is now running, so you can see that I can move my monitor. And I can also move the window and you can see that everything, so it's snapping back into place. So I can even move it to the corner. And this sphere is basically following the Unity logo because that's the image that I added as a reference. I also have a, a t-shirt that I put on the bottom. And you can see that if I go really fast, you can see that I have the Unity logo there. And in fact, is there we go, it's changing. So let's go back into my my computer. You can see that the even if I make the the icon the image is smaller, it's still tracking everything. I think it's, it's smart enough to know that it needs to it needs to change it. It's also changing. If you notice, I can change. Let me go back. I can also change the scale. So it's changing the scale of the sphere as I'm changing the scale. Of the window which is which is really crazy so I can change that and it changes there we go so that's basically how that works so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go and move into unity and show you some of the configuration and changes that I made to the to the code so this code is already in source control so I'm gonna go ahead and stop this scene we can close out of this let me just stop everything close out of this, close out of this, and also close out of this. Perfect. So what I want to show you is some of the things that I changed in this project. So just so you know, I put this in GitHub. So if you look at github.com, Dilmer V, and then look for this project, you'll see the latest changes that I checked in. So the only thing that I, that I really changed in here is I incremented the max number of moving, basically of moving images. So right now I set it to one when I checked it in. I'll check it in again and I set it to three. And, and the reason for that is because I want to make sure that, I, that we're tracking as many images as we can. I think three is a good number. Then the other thing that I did is I also make some changes to the implementation of the track image info manager. So if we open it up, I used to have a method here. Let me see if I can go back into the, looks like I lost the history because I already checked it in. But I can show you in GitHub. So let me just go ahead and pull it, and I'll show you the show you the repo as well. So this one is Unity AR Foundation Essentials. So if you go into that repo and we look at the commits, I'll show you how that works. So fix the scaling. Yep, this is the check-in that I did, and I removed this entire method because what this was doing was basically printing. And showing some information on the on a plane which we don't need and this was also some of the unity examples so I, I don't think I needed it for what I was basically showing you which is to place a sphere on on the image that was tracked and I also remove it from you know I remove that call remove that method the other thing that I did that wasn't correct is the scaling was set to one on Y so when I was placing a sphere, it was basically placing a very tall sphere. It looked basically like a line. So I make sure that the scaling, of course, for this example, is set to 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, all the way across X, Y, and Z. So that is basically the change that I had to do. And also I removed the, and I saw I removed the calls to the method. So there's really not much changes. All I wanted to show you is that it was working. I know. Some of you guys asked me why it wasn't working, so I just basically tested it and everything is working fine. Just to give you an overview of what this is doing is if we go back into Unity, so I can show you, you need to have on the AR session origin, if you're going to be tracking 
information, you're going to have to have the AR Track Image Manager. Make sure that you add that, and then you're going to create a reference library. I showed you that on the previous video. So make sure that you do that, because that's going to contain the database of all the images that you're going to be tracking. So if I double click on that, you'll see that it will take me to the library. And you'll see that I have the Unity logo. That is the one that we're tracking. So I'm going to go back and show you the rest. The other thing that I did is I added a place object. So this is the object that I'm placing when we recognize an image. So you'll notice if I go into that object and I went to drag the prefab, you'll notice that that is the sphere. And that is the sphere that we're placing on the position where we detect the image. So I'm just going to remove that so we don't get confused. Let me just delete it. Excellent. So that's those are the components that you need on the AR Track Image Manager. Then this component right here, is the additional one that I need in order for us to set the position at the right place. So if I go ahead and open it up, you'll see that I need, I basically have a re reference to the World Space Canvas camera. And that's basically just an instance there. And to be honest, we don't need this anymore. This was used for the UI components. So I'm actually going to remove it. And let's go ahead and get it out. And I don't believe we need the texture either because that was for the other example. I want to keep this as clean as we can so that when you run it, you don't have to, you don't have the question of if you need that or if you don't need it. So the other thing that I don't need, looks like I don't need any of these using statements. There we go. So this should keep it as bare bones as we need to. So we do have a reference to the AR Track Image Manager, which is the one that I just showed you through the inspector. Then what I'm doing is on Awake, I'm getting a reference to that component. And then I'm basically binding to these events, the track image change, and also when I remove, when I disable these component, I'm removing the binding that happened on that event. So whenever we receive this event, this one is going to get called. And when we call the on track images change, we're also going to get arguments. Those arguments are going to be the images that we're tracking. So if we found that the Unity logo is on a table, then what's going to happen is we're going to get this event, it's going to get executed, and then therefore we're going to get into this method. Then we're going to loop through each, each one of these, basically each one of the images that we're tracking, and we're going to assign the track image local to have the local scale to have this scaling. So what this is doing right now is just basically changing the scale of the object, which we don't really need anymore, to be honest, because we are already pretty fine that. So now that I think about all these, so the only reason why you would need the Track Image Info Manager in this case is if you wanted to make changes as soon as we get we get the images that we're tracking. So if we track, you know, the image on, on a table and we wanted to make changes, maybe we wanted to do animations on the object as soon as that happens, this could be the object that we're going to be animating. We could change the scale. We could do, you know, we could start an animation we could do there's just a lot of things that we could do so this is a way so the, the way to track the events that we're getting as soon as we track an image but for the most part this one is the one that you're going to need this is going to be the post events meaning if you want to basically bind to what's happening when we track the image then you can add you know your own script and you can bind to the methods that i just show you so that's basically everything that i wanted to show you i just wanted to make sure that you knew that this is a running example and it's working so if you guys have any other questions please let me know and also don't forget to check out the source code and get help thank you guys all right guys thank you very much for watching this video i really appreciate your time and if you have any questions please let me know also be sure to check out gamedev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers either you're starting now or you're an advanced game developer they have resources for you and also find me on patreon.com where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes. And I'm also posting early access to source code. So make sure that you go to patreon.com and find me there. So thank you very much, guys.